upgrade your Docker skills with Docker Compose. Learning Docker Compose makes your life so much easier and deploying multiple containers with just one command is so much fun. In my last video, we covered the basics of Docker, how to run containers, manage images, and work with volumes. But what if we need to run multiple containers together? Managing them individually can be a hassle. That's where Docker Compose comes in. By the end of the video, you'll be able to understand what Docker Compose is and why it's useful. Write your first docker-compose.yaml file and run and manage multiple containers with a single command. If you haven't watched my Docker Basics video yet, or you don't know anything about Docker at all, any commands, then I highly recommend you to check out this video first before you continue with this one here. So what is Docker Compose? Docker Compose is a tool that allows you to define and run multi-container applications using a simple YAML file. Instead of running multiple Docker run commands, you can define all your services in one place and start everything with one command docker compose up. To install docker we're going to follow the installation guide from docs.docker.com and the good thing about that is it already comes with docker compose so there is no need for an extra installation there. So let's jump right in into the terminal. First things first as always if you want to install something you run apt update first to update your repositories. After that one we're going to run this command to update our certificates, also done. And after that, we need to install those key rings, easy as that. And after that one, we're going to run this curl command to download something from docker.com. It's super fast as well. And after that, let's change mod what we just downloaded. And after that, we're going to add the repositories to the apt sources just like this. And now that we added it to the apt sources, we can run an apt update again. So all packages are up to date. And after this, we can start using the apt get install for docker ce, docker ce cli, container io, docker build plugin, and also last but not least, the docker compose plugin. So let's run this. It's already installed here for me. And just to make sure after that, we're going to run systemctl start docker and also enable docker. So now if we run systemctl status docker, it shows us that is already running. Mine is running because I already have some containers in there. And to check if everything is installed correctly, we can do docker dash dash version and also docker compose version. So those are the latest versions as of today. And to really check if you can run docker containers, you can do docker run hello dash world and if this message shows hello from docker this message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly so now we can start learn something about docker and docker compose let's create our first docker compose.yaml file let's make a new directory called test and change into test and in here we're going to create a file it needs to be called docker compose post.yml make sure it's really spelled like this and in here we can define define our volumes volumes let's create create one for nginx then in here in the services block we're going to define our services we're going to make an nginx web server first. So under nginx, we're going to define the image. It's nginx latest. We're going to give it a container name and 
nginx container. Let's give it a host name as well. nginx container. It needs a port, at least one. So let's map the port 8088 to port 80 inside our container. I can't use port 80 because I already used port 80 in a different setup, but that doesn't matter here. So we created a volume above. So now we want to use that volume. So nginx, this volume will be mapped inside nginx, inside the container, at the nginx. And then we're going to create a network or assign it a network. It's called my network. And since we assigned it a network, we need to create this network or define it here. So networks, my network, and it has a driver, which is bridge. So now if we save this up and then we run the command docker-compose-up-d for detached mode. So we have the terminal for ourselves. And then it tells us that the network, my network has been created and also the volume nginx has been created and the container nginx container has been created and is up and running. If we do docker ps, we can see that here, there's our nginx container with the port 8088 mapped to port 80 inside the container. In my docker compose.yaml file, I defined a host name. That's important to me because if we run docker exec-it, and the container name is nginx container and we're going to run the bash terminal then i am inside the nginx container and in here is the host name if you don't assign anything there it will be just the container id which is just a string of random numbers and letters so to navigate this more easily, I always assign host names. But the Nginx alone won't help us. What if we want to add a MySQL database to it? We can do another Docker Compose file, but that's not the point of Docker Compose. So what we are going to do instead is we're going to edit our current Docker Compose file and in here add a new line and then make sure it's on the same line as this nginx because we're going to define another service called db and the image for that will be mysql latest. We're going to give it a container name as well. mysql container and give it a host name as well. MySQL container. In here, we need an environment which will be this one MySQL root password equals root and to make the data persistent. We need to add a volume to, let's call it db data and map it to war lib mysql. That's where mysql stores their, its data. And since we define the volume or assign the volume, we need to define the volume here. We call it db data. Don't forget the colon and then jump back down here because we're going to assign it to the same network. So those two containers in theory can, not in theory, in actuality, 
they can talk to each other. My network. And I forgot we can define one more thing. We can do a restart unless stopped. Let's copy this line and paste it in here. So both containers will always restart uh, unless you specifically stop them. Okay, and with this now we can run docker compose up dash d again and it will pull the image for the mysql container should it shouldn't take that long and now it's done so it will create the volume db data here it will create the container and it also recreated or started the nginx container because it's in the same docker compose dash uh, yaml file so now if we do docker ps we should see our mysql container in here up and running but what if you don't want those containers to run anymore it's as simple as starting them up you just use the command docker compose down and then the containers and even the network have been removed if we do docker ps again now you see they're not anywhere to be found in here those are just my other containers that are running on this server and to start them up again easy as that docker compose up the just started them and you can also restart the whole setup with docker compose restart and then it tells us it's restarting those two containers and you can define much more containers inside one file and as we learned we have also logs for docker but we also have those for docker compose we can run docker compose logs and then it will give us all the logs from everyone uh, from every service that we defined it's even color coded here but you can still use docker logs nginx for example and then you still get those logs that you know and love another nice thing to do is we can docker exec into the container and or run commands in there with the service name so we can do docker compose exec for execute for the service db and we want to run the command mysql user root no oh, root dash p so it's going to ask us for the password Remember, we define the password in the, in the environment part. And then now we are inside the container and have the MySQL in here. We can quit this. And now we are back where we started. Inside our Docker Compose file, we defined this environment where we passed in or we written in the root password directly, but Obviously, you don't want it to have in this file by itself, but uh, we can use an environment file for that. So we're going to create one, wim.env, the dot makes it invisible. And then in here, we can define um, something like root password equals root. We can save this up and then Go back in the docker compose file and delete this here and then have dollar those brackets and then the name that we defined password so if anyone is going to read this they will just see uh, a root password is defined or if you're going to share this file with someone they're going to see that a root password is defined 
but obviously you're not going to share your .env file. And to test this, we can just save this and then run docker compose up dash d again, or we can do a down and and docker compose up dash d so it will execute the down command first when everything is removed removed it will do the up command to create everything again and you can see at the end here the seconds so it's really really fast with docker in general and also with docker compose and to show you that you can do it with more than just two containers let's check one docker compose file that i actually use this one here if we go all the way to the top we have three volumes that are defined for nextcloud the database and the redis container and then in the services we have the database service in here and you can see I'm passing through the environment information with those environment variables as well. And then we have a Nextcloud service reports and some more environment variables and some volumes. And then a Collabora service and Redis service and the high performance backend for Nextcloud talk for video calls and down at the bottom it's all in one container and you can see you don't need to save this you can see that if you run docker dash compose up dash d those are five containers they're all up and running and i don't mind using docker compose down and removing them all it takes a bit longer because those containers are all working and now it's all removed and then with docker compose up it is up and running again in less than two seconds this is it for docker compose obviously there's much more to learn about it especially um, in defining those different services but for most cases you can just use the docker hub documentation they always provide or they should always provide a docker run command as well as information about the docker compose syntax that you need for their container but in a nutshell this is it you know how to write the yaml file you can start different containers easily now multiple containers easily with just one command you can stop them again and with the information from the other video you already know how to handle docker in general even if you're using docker compose it doesn't mean that the normal docker commands don't come into play anymore so try and experiment with docker compose maybe set up your own next cloud like i show you in this video series right here and if you found this video helpful then like subscribe and maybe even leave a comment it helps out small channels like mine so much. Thanks for watching. See you next time.